the notebook that I'm sharing. Yes, is it, is it visible? Yes. Yes, so Aisha, you have also done the homework. Did you read and make notes? Aisha, are you there? Can you speak? No, I think she is not. She's having issues with the network. Okay, so what we'll do is, uh, I'll, I'll allow you to speak by you currently, where Aisha has rejoined. Aisha, I'm audible to you. Because you are not audible, you are mute, Aisha, if you're speaking. I think she's unable to speak or there's some issues. Okay, Iram. So what we'll do is let's do this. So you will speak and you'll tell me if you have, uh, what did you figured out? Just uh, not as a dictation, but just as a summary. Uh, these points are in front of you in the screen. Taking the help of these points, just tell about Arthropoda and what do you know about it? And if you have any doubts. Okay, do you understand, you know? Yes, sir. Yeah, quickly. So let's begin with Arthropoda. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Arthropoda, it is the largest phylum. Mm -hmm. of, and uh, which basically includes insects. Uh, over two third, two third uh, of the species are Arthropoda. They have um, organ system level of organization. They are bilaterally symmetrical. Uh, arthropoda are covered by chitinase uh, exoskeleton. Their mm -hmm. body of head, thorax, and abdomen. So, what, what do we mean by head, thorax, and abdomen? Like in a in a ant, you can see any insect, honeybee or ant. You can see that there's a big head. There's a small connecting thorax which connects the big head with the big abdomen, right? So what's a thorax? Thorax is like uh, the neck region, as we call it in humans. So we also have a head, and this is the thorax part, and then our abdomen. From our abdominal part, limbs come literally, like our hands and the legs come literally outside. But you understand the broader thing, head, then the thorax, even the thorax also in our case is um, the chest part and then the abdomen. Thoracic cavity is this cavity in our body. In insects, you will see that the head is big with two big eyes. Mostly insects have big eyes. And uh, then they have the reduced thorax in many insects, like in ants. And then you'll see there's a big abdomen. Do you understand? Yes. You know? Yeah. Okay. Continue. Um, they are mostly dioecious. Fertilization is uh, internal and mm -hmm. oviparous. What is oviparous? Yes. Okay. So there are two terms, viviparous and oviparous. Okay. So let's start today. So viviparous organisms are those organisms who give birth to the young ones, like their offsprings, okay? And oviparous lay eggs. Okay, so from these eggs, the babies hatch. Is it clear? You can remember it by the word O because O looks like an egg, right? Yes. Is it clear, Hiram? Yeah. So all insects are oviparous. They always lay eggs, right? Okay, continue. And what's special about insects? Yeah. They 
रेस्पिरेटरी ऑर्गेन्स आर गिल्स बुक गिल्स बुक लंग्स और ट्रैकियल सिस्टम सेंसरी ऑर्गेन्स लाइक एन एन ई एंटीने एंटीने बहुत है ना ना या दे हैव एंटीना आई वैसे इन इंसेक्ट्स विथ टू लॉन्ग ट्यूब्स एट द हेड यस इफ यू सी अ बटरफ्लाई सो बटरफ्लाई हैज दिस हेड रीजन इन द थोरैक्स रीजन इन द बिग एब्डोमेन and there are two things like this this is how we used to draw butterfly right yes and then with the wings correct so these are antennae okay continue economically important insects are apis honey bee bombex mm -hmm. silk and lacifer lac insect yes and so because uh, insect yeah continue first you complete then i'll say then gregarious pest is a uh, locusta locust and living fossil is limulus king crab what 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 do we mean by living fossil it is living and it is fossil how can something be living and fossil at the same time what is a fossil quick fossil what is a fossil you know you know about fossils we dig the earth then we get something we call it fossil what are what is that something uh, fossils they are preserved remains yes perfect they are remains of what animals humans so like can you find a fossil of a dog or a rabbit of current day dogs and current present day rabbits fossils are the remains of prehistoric animals which used to live millions of years ago which we have never seen we have never they have never lived or shared the earth with us but they were living in some era so we get information about their body their organs their anatomy and their physiology from the fossils only do you understand what was the size how big were they for example all our knowledge about dinosaurs comes from fossils have you seen any dinosaur ever anywhere no no but so how do we know that they were there they are just they are fossils right so how can some organism be called as a living fossil dinosaurs basically what were dinosaurs what kind of organisms were they to which category they belonged what were they insects reptiles mammals amphibians what were dinosaurs any idea hiram or aisha mm -hmm. okay If I ask you to make a guess, imagine a dinosaur. You all have seen Jurassic Park, so imagining a dinosaur is not difficult. And then, if I ask you, to which modern-day organism would you like to associate it with? Dogs? Uh, I'm not sure, but reptiles. Exactly, you are perfectly correct. dinosaurs were reptiles in reptiles what what do you think dinosaurs were like turtles snakes lizards what they were like they were lizards okay dinosaurs were big lizards they were big reptiles they they, they belonged to lizards okay so the house lizard that you see in your house or the garden lizard that you see around in your gardens they belong their ancestors once were dinosaurs okay yes okay so they had certain features that today's organism don't have some conserved 
morphological or anatomical features. Similarly, if we find an animal which is living today, but shares some features from prehistoric animals conserved over time, over millions of years, it has conserved some features. Then it is called a living fossil. King crab is one living fossil. There are many organisms that are considered as living fossil, even crocodiles. Crocodiles are very, very, if you look at a crocodile, doesn't it look like that if it was any bigger and could walk, it is a dinosaur only? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So king crab, crocodiles, all these are considered as living fossils. Okay. Yeah. So you said that there are different kind of, because it is the largest phylum, there are insects are everywhere. Everywhere. So insects are also useful to humans, harmful to humans, like the Anopheles and the Aedes mosquito, which causes dengue and malaria. So basically it acts as a vector and transmits these pathogens to human. So they are harmful. Insects can also be useful like honeybee. Honeybee <clears throat> produces honey or Bombyx mori. The scientific name of honeybee is Apis mellifera or silkworm, it's Bombyx mori which produce, gives us silk worm, uh, gives us silk or lacifer, which is lac insect. So you know what is a lac? Lac. Have you seen in, in previous times, kings used to write letters and then to seal, they used to pour some red kind of thing and put their seal on it. And the letter was sealed. They pour some substance on the letter and put their seal on it. Does it make sense yes. what I'm saying? That was lac. Lac bangles are also made. So you might see women wearing bangles made out of lac. So it's like a resin. Okay. Some insects are very, very uh, like uh, they create a ruckus for humans, like the pests, like locust. Locust just attack and eat the cereals, the wheat plantation a lot, like corn, maize, and the rice plantation. So locusts are, are a big gregarious pest. Gregarious pest means the pest which affects the agricultural yield or the food items. And then living fossil is again king crab, as I told you. So do you have any doubts in kingdom, uh, in, in phylum arthropoda, Iram? So why is... Yeah. Fish not a part of this. Why not fish is a part of what? Arthropoda. Fish not a part of arthropoda. Why do you think fish should be a part of arthropoda? First of all, tell me. I mean, what features? Like yeah. Crab. What features? Okay, you mean crab is a part of arthropoda, so fish also should be like that. Uh -huh. Let's go to the word. You are you're very, very obvious, very good question, actually. I never thought about it. No one asked me this question before. So I know that it's not a part because I have my own reasons. But this is what happens. You know, discussions become good when someone with a clean slate like you comes and asks very fundamental questions that sometimes we or the ones who have knowledge about it, we never think we are occluded by knowledge. Okay, so too much of knowing something also puts a hue. Because we know the obvious reason, so we never question these things. So let's go to the word. Let me try to answer this. What does the word arthro and the word poda means? How is this phylum defined? That is your answer. Every phylum's name tells something. Annelids, segmented worms. Okay. Before that, Ascalminthus, round worms. Platyhelminthus, flat worms. Platy means flat, helminthus means worms. Before that, what was before that? What was before Platyal Minthus? Tinophora and sealant uh, trata. They were jelly, jelly fishes or the Tinophora were non-stinging bioluminescence jellyfishes. Okay. So when we come to arthropoda, the word arthro means what? In biology, have you made that uh, terminology section, you know? Uh, yes, sir. Hmm. Uh, 
आर्थ्रो मीन्स जॉइंट और जॉइंटेड एंड द वर्ड पोडा मीन्स अपेंडेजेस और लिम्स और लेग्स वॉट एवर यू कॉल इट सो वट डज आर्थ्रोपोडा मीन्स जॉइंट लेग्स organisms that have joint legs are called arthropoda is it clear yes do fish have joint legs no fish don't have human legs so we cannot put them in arthropoda crabs do crabs have joint legs yes yes if you look at a crab a crab structure is something like this you know it has like eyes like this and then if you see a crab has joint legs like this right so it walks laterally not a very good depiction of the crab i have done here so forgive my artistic skills but you understood right yeah but butterfly doesn't right have legs butterflies don't have joint appendages butterflies do have legs right have we not seen butterflies when they are sitting with their wings like this If you see, they are small organisms with wings, but they sit on the plant with legs like this. You understand? Yes. Yeah. So this is the wing of a butterfly, and these are the legs. If you remove the wings of the butterfly, it will look like any other insect, like an ant or. Yeah. But every insect has. a head a thorax and abdomen and from the thorax three pair of legs coming right you know um let me ask you who are spiders also insects or not yes they are no they are not spiders are not insects they are arachnids Okay. <clears throat> the difference between an insect and an arachnid, both of them come under arthropoda. That's true. They both are in phylum arthropoda, spiders and other insects. But there are different species, many species of spiders, and there are many species of insects as well. Insects have three pair of appendages, which are joint. and they are jointed what do you understand what do i mean by jointed so i mean by this so if you look carefully at a leg of any insect it looks like this so there is will be one segment and then there will be a joint another segment will be jointed to that segment and then there will be another joint and the third segment will be jointed to that segment it looks something like this so there will be three mechanical joints which you will be able to see from the top you understand 1 and 3 yes yeah so humans also have joints in our appendages so for example in my hand i have a joint here right because of which i can move my hand like this i also have joint in my wrist but because this joint are not visible from outside it does not give us a impression of a joint appendage make sense to you that's why humans are not in arthropoda our skeleton is inside our body it's called endoskeleton a insect skeleton is outside the body made up of chitin it's called exoskeleton make sense to you hiram yes so insects have three pair total six legs how many does spiders have ever carefully seen the spider man logo how many legs are made in a spider man's logo uh, around eight not around exactly eight okay. so arachnids have four pair of appendages and their appendages are also jointed that's why both arachnids and other insects are in arthropoda but 
they are slightly different from each other. Okay. Yes. Do you know which is the biggest spider? It's called tarantula. Tarantulas are very big. Sometimes tarantulas could be as big as they can weigh up to two kgs. They can be so big, they can actually predate on small birds. They can even kill small doves and chickens and eat them. So they are and their body is full of flesh. It's not like just insect. If you dissect their body, you will see flesh in their body. They are big, two two and a half kgs, heavy spiders. Okay. So yes. the word arachnids is used for spiders, and if someone has a fear of spider, it's called arachnophobia. Will you remember that? You know. So does that answer your question? Why fish are not in phylum Arthropoda, but crabs are? Yes. Hmm. Okay. Let's. So. Excretion, there's one important point that I, I, I don't know if you mentioned it or not. It is called Malphigian tubules. Yes. You know? yes. What is Malphigian tubules? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They are the excretory organs. Okay. Excretion in insects takes place through specialized kind of organ called Malphigian tubule. Just like we have our kidneys, right? And what about their fertilization? Is it internal or external? Is it there, Irm? Uh, they, it will be external. No, it will be internal. Insects, have internal fertilization. So the males, they deposit their sperms in the females spermatheca. Females have, in insects, females have a storage organ where they can store the sperm of the males for, for even days and can use it as per their wish to fertilize their eggs and then lay those eggs whenever they find a safe ground. Okay. Um, so, yeah. A question: If they are oviparous, if they laying legs, then how can it be internal the fertilization? Even birds lay eggs. Oviparous does not have to mostly. It's not like if you are oviparous, you cannot have internal fertilization. What is an egg? An egg contains a baby inside, right? Yeah. So where does the egg comes from inside the body? So first, to make an egg, what you must have formed, the embryo, right? It's not like you make an egg first and then put an embryo inside. You made an embryo first and then made a covering, a shell around it. Now it becomes a packed egg. Yes or no? So the baby is safe inside. So even in case of birds and insects, inside their body, what would have been formed first, the egg or the embryo? The egg shell or the embryo? Embryo. Embryo, because it's an inside out process. You cannot make the egg shell and then inside make an embryo. So, and if embryo would have been made first, fertilization would have happened internally, right? That's, that's, that's where the embryo came from, no? Yeah, I got it. Makes sense, makes sense to you, you know? Yeah. yeah, very good. Okay, so continue. So let's go to the next phylum, if you have any problem with mollusca, tell me. Just revise mollusca the same way and tell me if you have any problem. Now, mollusca is the second largest phylum. And the word mollusca comes from soft bodied organism. So their body is very soft. Yes, continue or begin. Um, they're the second largest phylum. Uh, mm -hmm. Mollusca are terrestrial or aquatic. They have mm -hmm. organ system level of function. They're bilaterally symmetrical. 
the body is covered with calcareous shells calcareous made yes. up of calcium because they themselves are very soft bodied organisms to cover or to protect themselves sometimes they have a calcium shell around itself uh i don't know if you know about uh, oysters do you know about oysters yeah i know so oysters open and there is a pearl inside they make pearls pearl oysters so the the thing which opens like a soap box that is very hard right yeah where is the organism inside that inside that right and that is very soft like a tissue or have you seen snails carrying their their yeah. shell on their back so what happen if you touch a snail it will go inside its shell and close the doors right yeah yeah so that is for their protection so they carry a shell and that shell is also produced by them only through calcium depositions so that's called calcareous shell okay yes okay continue um they have a soft and a spongy layer of skin which forms mm -hmm. a mantle of the visceral hump mm -hmm. the space between the hump and the mantle is called uh, uh, the mantle cavity which of uh, which feather like gills what are gills they are the respiratory organs exactly they are respira respiratory organs of what kind of organisms who needs gills fishes aquatic organisms the organisms which live in water they cannot breathe from lungs like we can because we can breathe in air then lungs can take oxygen put it in the blood and the rest can throw out uh, organisms in water cannot do that imagine an octopus or a fish okay they cannot do that so they have somehow where do they get their uh, oxygen from do they don't need oxygen o2 o2 where do they get it from um oxygen is dissolved in water yes these gases correct these gases are also dissolved in water okay so that's called dissolved gas so clearly these organisms have to figure out a way to get that oxygen from the water now for that they have gills now what are gills gills are simply imagine your comb okay so when you comb your hair all the hair passes brushes through your comb individual comb right so in gills the same thing happen organism water aquatic organisms take in water so they gulp water and then make that water move through the gills and come out so that's what fish also do you, you know fish have gills around their neck region i've seen yes so they open yeah. the mouth take in water then blow that water out from their gills now when it is going out from the gills gills have these cells that can absorb oxygen from their dissolved water and rest everything goes out okay make yeah. sense so in mollusks because they are soft bodied they don't have a um, hard bo body so they have these feather like gills so their gills are also floating with their what with their body so as they are floating in water these gills keep absorbing oxygen from the water that they get in their cavity so the head and the visceral hump as you said there is a space between the head and the mantle which is called the mantle cavity in that cavity they gather water and from that water these feather like gills can absorb oxygen for their respiration is it clear yeah so there is also oh. one more example called octopus mm -hmm. oct yes this calcareous shells right right octopus do not have a calcareous shell 
but octopus do have one very sharp you know octopus have this something called radula okay octopus mouth contains radula it's a very sharp organ rasping organ for feeding so octopus can kill other organisms by just pricking that radula inside and just rasping it with them it's very it's very fine file like you know what the, what is the meaning of rasping rasp you know what is the meaning of grasping yes sir. yes what is grasping to hold very tightly okay and to rasping is something which uh, holds you and when try you try to come out of it it peels you off like a grater you have used grater to grate paneer and other things like uh, uh, like this like uh, carrots for making carrot ka halwa you grate the carrot right so that can imagine that kind of organ which very sharp and anything comes in contact with it it can just peel it off that is made up of calcium in octopus okay instead of the hard shell for protection and for feeding both does that answer your question iru yes sir yes so do you have any other Uh, let's let's complete uh, mollusca go on continue you know uh, yes sir uh, the yeah. interior head region has three tentacles what about their uh, reproduction development etc level uh, of organization dioecious. symmetry yes so they dioecious and um, oviparous with indirect development what about symmetry what do you think look at mollusks snail octopus what do you think what kind of symmetry do they have they asymmetrical asymmetrical means no shape they do have a shape if you look at a snail don't you think a snail has a shape it can like be it can shorten itself lengthen itself get into the shell that's all it is a different thing but if you look at the body don't you think it has a shape yeah it does so if an organism has a shape a fixed shape it the shape will have some symmetry podifera for that matter have no shapes so no symmetry if i draw octopus for you here let's do that so if you look at a snail you know snails also have tentacles right and they are quite big so if i remove the so here is that thing which they carry right like this bilaterally symmetrical yes so yeah correct don't you think their body is actually if we get rid of this thing you can divide it into two parts it's bilaterally symmetrical same is with octopus you know that octopus have a big head and from that head they have their eyes they look like aliens actually right and then they have tentacles right yes but this there's one more organism called pila i think it won't have it is a different shape pila pila is a snail only pila is apple snail Pila is apple snail, big snail. Okay.
make sense, Adam? Yes. Sir. Okay. File as apples in it. Okay. Anything else? This one is done. Okay. Then let's come to a Canada Dermata. And let's finish it quickly. Come on, go on, summarize. What, yes. do you, what do you, what does your note say? Uh, yeah, they have a uh, endoskeleton of Kilkei's ossicles. But what are ossicles? Okay. Ossicles are just structures like this. Long, long structures like sticks, which together you use to make a structure. Like, have you seen of a bamboo hut? Yes. You can make a bamboo wall, but in the wall, each bamboo acts as an ossicle. You understand? It's not like a brick mechanism. It's like many straight or some branched ossicles are put together to give it a strength. Yes. Okay? Hmm. Yeah. So um, they are marine. They have a organ system level of organization. They are radially, radially symmetrical, but the larvae are bilaterally symmetrical. And digestive uh, system is complete with mouth on the lower ventral side and anus on the upper dorsal side. Most uh, dis distinctive feature of echinoderms is the presence of water vascular system, which helps in locomotion and um, transport of food. Uh, excretory system is absent, and sepsis. Now, before are... you go to excretory system, uh, Iram, yeah. you have studied something like a water canal system, right? Yeah. Where was that? Where was water canal system? Water canal. Go to the beginning. Go to Porifera. Can you see Porifera? They are sponges. Yes. So they have a central cavity called spongocele. So water enters like a canal system, stays in that central cavity. That cavity also helps in excretion and nutrition, right? You get food or excrete waste and then the water goes out of, uh, they enter through osculum and goes out through osteum, right? Yes. In water vascular system, it, it happens in echinoderms. Again, the similar kind of thing is there. Water enters from one side, which is mostly Towards the um, uh, ventral side, there is a mouth, water enters. It also helps, apart from respiration and food, it also helps in locomotion here. In terms of echinoderms, it also is used for locomotion. So water vascular system is more planned a water system than water canal system. Okay? But in both, water enters from one side, stays in a cavity, and move out through other openings. So don't get confused between water vascular system, it's present in echinoderms, and water canal system that's present in porifera. Okay, make sense? Yeah. Yeah, yes, continue. Yeah, um, the excretory system in them is absent, sexes are separate, development is indirect, with so if excretory system is absent, does it mean that echinoderms never excrete? They never generate any waste in their body? What does it mean? Excretory system is absent. Is it possible that, a, that an organism yeah. who can eat, who is eating, respiring, doing all sorts of activities, cannot excrete. Is it possible? 
yeah if the body uh, if yeah. the body mouth the if mouth the so has both um, anus as well as the mouth right then it is possible oh but you told that uh, they have uh, different it's a complete digestive system it has a mouth on the lower side and a anus on the upper side as i as i can recollect you said that right so there are two openings here not just one okay yeah yeah so you make sense that if there is only one opening that will act as ingestion and excretion both so you don't need a different system you just like just excrete everything in that but here the excretory system is absent so how is excretion happening or are they not excreting at all there there is the anus situated on the upper side right so mm -hmm. so my so See, they are living in water. They have a water vascular system and an open digestive system, complete. So they don't need an excretory system because any waste which is developed in the cell or the tissue can directly be thrown out through water vascular system. And any waste which is generated from inability to digest the food or from the food can be thrown out through anus. Okay. So digestive system is different from excretory system. In humans. Which organ is a part of digestive system? Tell me. Mouth, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine. All these are digestive systems part organs, right? What are the excretory systems organs in humans? Kidney. Kidneys. And what do they produce? Urea. Urine. Yes, because we have a circulatory system, right? That produces that needs constant filtering to remove out the waste. That is called excretory waste. In echinoderms, there is no need. You can directly excrete things in the immediate surrounding through the water vascular system, just like in the water canal system, sponges were doing. Makes sense to you? Yeah. Okay. Great. Continue. Yeah, that's it. Too. It's done. Okay, and I'm hoping I hope that you are taking care of examples. Yeah. 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 So please remember examples from NCERT because for me also it's not possible to remember all the examples. But some examples which are important in uh, echinoderms you should know is the starfish, which is called Asterius. The name Asterius is common, and its starfish is common. And also sea urchin, it's called echinus. Asterius, echinus, these are common. So in echinoderms, you will see things named on the basis of their shape, like starfish, sea urchin, sea lily, sea cucumber. All these kind of names are there. Okay. So just remember their scientific name as much as you can. Okay. And then today we have to start with. Hemichordates and chordates, right? And I told you that I will take from chordates. You have to do till echinoderm only, correct? Yes, sir. Okay, very well. So let's begin. With okay, before chordates, let's begin with hemichordates. Phylum. Hemichordata. What does the word hemi means? Hemisphere. Half. Half. Very good. Incomplete. Now, you know, hemichordates, when people figured out that there are some organisms which are which are not proper chordates and also not non-chordates. 
so they were named as hemichordates and earlier hemichordates were considered as a sub phylum in the phylum chordates but now because we get more and more organisms we know them we know much about them they are different in many aspects from the chordates so a new phylum has been created which is the hemichordate phylum okay now what happens is uh, chordates have something called notochord okay hemichordates do not have a notochord but a uh, another structure known as stomochord so right down hemichordates have stomochord okay which is equivalent to or a structure similar to notochord okay so if you have notochord you will be a chordate but if you do not have a notochord but something similar called my audible you know yes so no. yeah sorry uh, there is some network issue at my side so i just lost the connection abruptly okay um, is my voice clear yes it's clear okay so i'll just speak let's let, let me keep the video off for some time so that we can continue okay uh, can you can you give me the co host capabilities to share the screen I think you are the host because I logged off. 
So it automatically what? Just go to the three dots and make me host. Yes, I got it. Can you see the screen that I'm sharing? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, very good. Just one second, let me. Okay, so I was saying that hemi chordates. So they are not proper chordates because they have they don't have a proper notochord. But they have something called stomochord, which is a structure similar to notochord. Now in this phylum, you will see worm-like structures which have major three regions. One is called head, and then they have a proboscis. Sorry, the, the head is proboscis, then they have a collar region, and then they have a trunk region. So they are they are worms that look like this. Now this region is called proboscis. This region is called collar. Their body is distinctly divided into these three and a trunk that follows like a tail. And inside this collar region, they have a structure which goes inside. So if you cut open this collar region, you will see that there is a structure which goes inside. And this structure is called the stomochord. You understand? So write down hemichordates consist or contains worm-like marine animals. Worm-like marine. No hemichordate live in is found in uh, freshwater lakes, rivers. So they are always marine. Worm-like. marine animals okay and they have organ system level of organization they are very advanced worms okay so of course they are triploblastic because they are worms. So what will be the sim uh, symmetry? Yeah, what will be the symmetry? Bilateral. Bilateral, yes, perfect. You just know it, right? <clears throat> so they are triploblastic, bilateral symmetry. They have a true coelom. All these things are clear because the body is cylindrical and this the examples you just two examples you have to remember one is balanoglossus this is this looks like a part so let me delete this it's not deleting okay so examples are balanoglossus and sacoglossus Simple. So these are two examples. And they only contain this, uh, what do you say, this stomochord for some part of their life. It's not present for the whole part of their life. Do you understand? Yes. Yeah. So circulatory system is open. They don't have blood vessels. They have gills because they are marine. So they live in water. So they have gills. It's obvious. So you can just expect what are the obvious things. They have. Ex Do you think that they will have a, a excretory organ? Yes, they do. So their proboscis gland is its excretory organ only. Okay. So write down. 
the proboscis gland is the excretory organ. And they are dioecious organisms. What do I mean by dioecious organisms? Hiram. Um, they, they, their sexes are separate? Yes, they have two bodies in the species. One will be a male body and the other will be a female body. So their sexes are separate. But their ex fertilization is external and the development is indirect. So which means they have a larval stage. Okay. They have a larval stage that does not look like their parents, adult parents. That is what we mean by indirect development, correct? Yeah. So is hemichordata clear? They don't ask you much questions about from hemichordata. Just the fact that they have a collar region in which you have a stomo uh, cord instead of a notochord. Okay. So they are hemichordates. Yes, sir. Now the most important phylum and the last phylum where we will be spending a lot of time and where you will get to know where your fish are and where your birds are, where your reptiles are. We have not studied anything like we have not studied fish. We have not studied amphibians, reptiles, birds or mammals in the animal kingdom till now, right? They all come under this very, very huge phylum but still it is not the largest or the second largest. The largest is Arthropoda, the second largest is Mollusca. So all the chordates together, fish, amphibians, reptiles, birds, and mammals, even if you combine all of them together under the phylum chordata, they will not be able to match so, numbers. Yes. So I'm not able to hear you. Uh, you're not able to hear me still? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's audible now. It's audible, right? Okay. Correct. Great. So if there's any problem, just let me know. Okay. You might be suffering some network glitch. Uh, I'll repeat myself. So I was saying, which is the largest phylum? Can you hear uh, me? Yeah. Yeah. Which is the largest phylum? Poda. Yeah. Arthropoda. Which is the second largest phylum? Mollusca. Mollusca. What does Arthropoda contains as a phylum? What what organisms are present in that phylum? The the organism have uh, joint appendages. Yeah, just name the organisms collectively. What are what are the kind of organisms present in Arthropoda? Scott. Insects and spiders. Right. Yeah. Insects, scorpions are also, they come under insects only because they have six legs. Spiders are arachnids, they have eight. But they together come under arthropoda, which makes the, it the largest phylum. And what comes under mollusca? Pila and octopus? Yes. Snails, octopus, your... Um, oysters, etc, etc. Soft bodied organisms. They are the second largest phylum. But look at chordata. The phylum chordata, which is neither first nor second, but it has so diverse uh, number of diverse kind of organisms. Your fish, amphibians, reptiles, birds, mammals, including humans, we all belong to the phylum our cats, dogs, horses, cattle, our birds, pets. Again, all of our fish in the aquarium, we all come to the phylum chordata, but still it is not the largest or the second largest. So do you understand? Even if you combine all the fish, all the birds, all the amphibians, all the reptiles, all the mammals together, they will still be less in number than the number of insects which are there on the planet. Do you understand? 
Yes. Just to give you how huge uh, a phylum Arthropoda is, if you just take ants, you know ants. How many species of ants are there? Any idea on the planet? Like how many we know? There can be more than that. But how many at least we know? It is around 30,000. Okay, let's say. Can you hear me, Hiram? You know? Yes, sir. You know, if I take all the ants, just the ants, I'm not talking about butterflies, beetles, other insects at all. I'm just talking about ants. If I take all the ants and calculate their dry mass, their mass total, you know how much is the mass? How many humans are there on the planet? Seven billion. Seven billion. Let's say 7.3 billion. So 7.3 billion humans and total mass of humans will be huge, right? Including kids, adults, old, everything. The total mass of humans will be huge. Now, if I take all the ants only, their total mass will be around one third of the total human mass. Now, isn't it mind boggling? Just the ants. What if I can include butterflies, locusts, and um, spiders and mosquitoes. It's going to be more than the total human mass, multifold more. That's why phylum arthropoda is the biggest phylum. Do you understand? Yeah. Yeah. There are way too many insects than you can imagine or you can study on the planet. Insects are the most diverse kind of organisms. Most diverse. After insects, that kind of diversity is seen in birds. You will see birds of many different say, shapes, sizes, and patterns. From a peacock to a manna to a parakeet to a bird of paradise all sorts of birds okay anyway so let's come to the phylum chordata this is the not the largest but the most important phylum for your entrance now chordates are named on the basis of the presence of notochord first. So that's why they are called chordates. But it's not just notochord. Okay. The phylum chordata has some characteristic features. Every organism in phylum chordata must have four features, which are characteristic features of fundamental characteristic features of phylum chordata. So write down the phylum chordata is fundamentally characterized by the following features. Fundamentally characterized by the following features. These are the features that every chordate will have at some point or the other in its life. First is, of course, the notochord. And if I ask you what is a notochord, now you know what is a notochord, right? A cord passing through as an in the embryonic stage, right? To the body yes. axis. In our case, it is dorsal. So first is notochord. Second is nerve cord which is dorsal and hollow dorsal and hollow nerve cord third is
pharyngeal gill slits. And these gill slits should be paired. And the fourth is post anal tail. These four features has to be present in all chordates. Now I told you humans are chordates. So you can ask me where is the tail in humans, right? And where is the gill slit? I can only see a notochord in the embryo. I can see the dorsal hollow nerve cord in a human that's there. But where are gills and where is the tail? Right? Yes, sir. Do we have tails and do we have gill slits? Not after birth, but do you know before birth? The embryo. human embryo yes yeah. the human embryo does have gill slits in the beginning in the earliest phase of the development of the embryo the embryo develops gill slits later on those gill slits disappear okay so every embryo regardless of which organism's embryo it is in the beginning it looks like this a big head bud then there is a body, there will be small hands and tail leg buds and there will be a tail like structure. There will be an eye here and there will be gill slits. Okay? Every uh, embryo looks something like this. Yes, tell me. Various organisms will also have the same embryo as humans, right? Exactly. If you look at a chicken embryo, which is which later on when it takes birth looks nothing like a human. If you look at an elephant embryo, a dolphin embryo, a shark embryo, a rabbit embryo, a horse embryo, a pig embryo, in the beginning, the earliest stages, which is called the stage one. Now the time may differ depending on how long is the pregnancy of different organisms. Humans have a nine month pregnancy. Okay. Some organisms have just few or two month pregnancy. Some organisms like elephants have 22 months pregnancy, which is almost two years. So their stages will also be different, right? But what will not be different is stage one. So let's say in humans, the stage one phase stays for one month. In elephant, it can stay for four months. In some other organism, it can just stay for one week, but there will be a stage one, right? In that stage one, you can see these features that there will be a cord here, so there will be gill slits. There will be two cords running here. So the outer one will be the nerve cord. And the inner one will be the notochord. And this nerve cord will be hollow. And both of them will be present at the dorsal side. So both of them are present on the dorsal side. This is the ventral side. So you will see this and this is with the tail bud. Can you see all the features? Gill slits, nerve cord, notochord and tail bud? Yes. Sir. Apart from that, you will see these buds. Even in organisms who do not have legs and hands. For example, which organism does not have a leg or a hand? Any organism which is legless, limbless, Yes, of course. Fish? Sna snakes. And even fish, you're right. Fish have fins, but not legs and hands, right? But if you look at their embryo, they also have these uh, leg bud and hand buds. So these are called buds. Okay, appendage buds. Okay, they are also present. And this is for the development of eye. So this become heads, the body and the tail. Do you understand? Every chordate embryo looks like this in the first stage. So this is a proof that 
every coordinate must have these four fundamental features. Okay. You know? Yes. Yes. Very good. Now, talking about some basic things. So, tell me, bilateral uh, uh, symmetry. Sorry. Bilaterally symmetrical. Make sense. Okay. Let's talk about their uh, uh, level of organization. Celomate with organ system level of organization. Organ system level. Celomate, which means true body cavity will be there. They will be celomates and triploblastic, right? Of course. Triploblastic, celomates. And what about, uh, so they possess post anal tail. And what about uh, circulatory system? It will be a closed circulatory system. What do you mean by closed circulatory system? I explained this to you. What is closed circulatory system? You know? uh, in closed circulatory system, mm -hmm. uh, the the blood, uh, the heart pumps blood. Mm -hmm. In it, heart can pump blood in open circulatory system as well. That's not a problem. Why do we call something as closed and something as open circulatory system? It's, it's um, it is the blood is enclosed in vessels and the heart. Perfect. Right. Perfect. So in a closed circulatory system, the blood remains inside the closed blood vessels. Okay. In open circulatory system, the blood is present everywhere in the body, and all the tissues and all the cells are directly bathing in the blood. Okay. Now, do you have NCRT? You know, with you right now? Yeah. Can you open page number? Let me see what is the page number? 55, I think. Can you open the page number 55 and look at a comparison table between chordates and non chordates? Let me try to pull that out for you here also. Did you got the page? Yes, sir. Yeah. Is it on 55 only page? Yeah, 55. Um, one second. Let me pull it. Chapter 4, page number 55, right? Just give me one moment. Yeah. Yes, I got it. Okay, can you read that table for me? You know. Yes, sir. Uh, codates, notochord is present. Non-codates, notochord is absent. Um, codate, central nervous system is dorsal, hollow and single. Non-codate, central nervous system is ventral, solid and double. Codate, pharynx perforated by gill slits. Uh, Non-codate, gill still, uh, gill Slits are absent. Uh, yeah. Chordate. Can you see this table as well on the screen? Yes. Sir. Yeah. Now continue. Yeah. Chordates, heart is ventral. Non chordate, heart is dorsal if present. Uh, Chordates, a post anal part tail is present. Non chordates, post anal tail is absent. Yes. Okay. So look at some words which are, which can, which uh, they tweak and make it difficult and just ask in the entrance. So chordates, the first criteria is notochord. Okay. So it is present and it is absent. Makes sense. Central nervous system is dorsal, CNS. When I say central nervous system, 
you have to the moment someone says central nervous system just know that it contains two things brain and spinal cord nothing else only these two things are central nervous system and spinal cord they are talking about this because brain cannot be so dorsal or ventral brain is brain right it it, has, it is anterior at the top of the head does it make sense to you you know yeah so brain is there at the top of the head but where is spinal cord towards the ventral side or dorsal side you now know the ventral dorsal. and dorsal yes dorsal. do you uh, uh, do you have any confusion in ventral or dorsal side i got it. you got it very good so the central nervous system is dorsal by which they mean that the spinal cord is dorsal here the central nervous system is ventral by which they mean what is ventral the spinal cord is ventral okay here it's dorsal and hollow and single in non chordates it's ventral solid and double everything is opposite you understand so we we can remember a chordates nervous system as dhs okay i use the term dhs dorsal hollow single and here it's v s d okay ventral solid and double okay now in chordates pharynx are perforated by gill slits so remember i showed you what is pharynx tell me these are the gill slits that i showed you here in the embryo what are pharynx larynx and pharynx you have done this right you know yes sir what is pharynx uh it is a tube inside the neck no pharynx and larynx what is larynx you have studied larynx in voice right yeah yeah so that's called larynx so you know esophagus the food pharynx is that region it in your ah uh, yes tell me tell me tell me pharynx is throat right larynx no no pharynx the throat is made up of pharynx and larynx together okay yeah. pharynx is that common opening in your if you go in your oral cavity there is a common opening where your nose your mouth and your ear and your eyes like all these openings from the eyes the tear gland the nose they open in one common place in your throat has has it happened to you sometimes that sometimes you put some nasal drops in the nose and the taste comes in your mouth yeah why how nose is it means that nose has to be connected with the mouth somewhere right because yeah because mouth esophagus nose are connected together yeah that's that region is called pharynx esophagus starts after pharynx okay it is down in your neck we are talking about the top part where there is a hollow region before the esophagus starts and larynx is your that voice box in males the adam's apple which protrudes outside it's also present in females it is not that prominent and protruding in males it is more prominent and protruding but larynx is present in both and pharynx is that common opening okay where all these things come so the nasal drop goes through your nose and comes into pharynx and from pharynx it can come back into mouth and that's where you get that taste of the nasal drop make sense to you yeah similarly due to pharynx only sometimes if a person is eating something and also talking and suddenly the the person sneezes or gets some coughing reflex then sometimes the food comes through the nose comes out through the nose right due to rush of the air that's again because these these cavities are joined together in the pharynx make sense to you you know yes one question to yes. um pharynx is uh, the common passage for respiratory respiratory and digestive systems as well right yes 
that is the throat or opening so if you eat or if you um, breathe in the both go through pharynx through pharynx one the, whatever you eat goes into esophagus and whatever you breathe goes into the vagina so that's why we should not talk while eating because when you talk you breathe actively so and when you talk you create sound to create sound you are using your wind pipe but to swallow food you are using your food pipe if you are doing both of it simultaneously the chances of mixing now if air goes into food pipe not a problem but if food goes into the wind pipe that is a big problem okay make sense you know so what so, would be because it will go into the lung it will choke your lung it will cause infection in the lung because food might have uh, food particles will degrade over time it will rot bacteria will degrade it over time right hmm. yeah. so in your wind pipe and wind pipe lungs do not have a opening whatever goes in the lung stays in the lung they say that okay so if someone smokes whatever toxins are going in the lungs stay in the lungs whatever goes in the stomach can come out the next day through the anus right through our large intestines so you can still detoxify what goes into your stomach but you cannot detoxify what goes into your lungs that effectively make sense to you yeah yeah very good so nothing apart from air should go in your lungs ideally but it does so the difference is that in chordates the pharynx part is perforated by gill slit so these gill slits are present in the pharynx region okay whereas in non chordates gill slits are not at all present so non chordate embryos do not have gill slits only chordate embryos have gill slits make sense yes then heart is ventral again heart is towards your ventral side so you you can keep your hand on your heart you don't keep it on your back if i say that where is your heart you will show me the ventral side in non chordates heart is dorsal and in some non chordates heart may be absent there is no concept of heart okay there is just a flap that keeps pushing the fluid and no heart and fifth is the post anal tail is present even in humans it is present and it is known as coccyx the last bone of our vertebral column is called coccyx it is the rudimentary tail bone and in non chordates the post anal tail is absent is this part clear to you clear yeah okay okay very good so in the next class i will go into the details of this phylum and in the phylum we will be talking about the classes now okay so kingdom phylum then class and order right we will not go beyond uh, i think class for your case, for, for your um, syllabus uh, only in mammals i will tell you about some orders which have been asked in neat entrances but otherwise we will we will stop at the class